one. This presentation is on withholding tax imposed under the In Revenue Amendment Act number no. 45 of 2022. First, we will see what are the withholding tax imposed under Section 84 and Section 84A of the In Revenue Act number no. 24 of 2017. Generally, these uh, withholding taxes are imposed when person making payments to another person. So this section 84 and section 84A having a clear difference when compared the payments make to may, makes to resident individual which will be taxed under section 85. So if you are a person and you are making uh, withholding tax subjected payments to a resident or non-resident person generally this section is applicable when defining a person there is no government ministries or departments or any other local authorities included under this, this definition so if you are a, if you are a government um, department or a government ministry or a local authority you need not to deduct withholding tax imposed under section 84 and section 84a but public corporations or government owned businesses government owned companies have to comply uh, with these provisions according to section 84.3 there are certain exclusions you have to consider when when uh, complying with the section 84 and 84a there it says you need not to deduct withholding tax when you are making payments for uh, other person for an example first one is if you are a person who is not doing a business and you are a, you are an individual so in that case you need not to deduct withholding tax on uh, withholding tax liable payments for an example if uh, mr pereira making payments to a payments for a rent and in that case mr pereira is not doing a business so he uh, he does not want to deduct withholding tax or advance income tax from the payment of that rent the second one is when a bank or financial institution receives their loan uh, payment together with capital amount uh, and interest. So in that case, uh, as a person, you make the payment for loans together with interest to financial institution and that financial institution receives that uh, interest payment as a ordinary loan interest payment. So in that case, you need not to deduct advance income tax imposed under this section. But suppose that you are a person who make loan interest payment to another person which is not a financial institution. In that case, you have to deduct uh, advance income tax imposed under this section. The third item is uh, on behalf of government. Central Bank of Sri Lanka issues and pay interest or discount on treasury bills and treasury bonds. In that case, uh, Central Bank will not deduct withholding tax or advance income tax on payment of interest and discount on treasury bills and treasury bonds. But it's not an exemption, it's only an exclusion for withholding tax. Therefore, the person who receives interest on uh, treasury bills and bonds should be included those interest and discount under the un, under their taxable income uh, according to the applicable source and then they have to make tax payments subject to the provisions of the inner revenue act the final item or the fourth item is if the person uh, receives this payment and that uh, payments are exempted uh, in the hands of individual in, in the hands of recipient or the or in the hands of withholding so in that case also withholding agents are not required to deduct 
advance income tax or withholding tax from such payment. The fourth one uh, will be uh, managed by will be administered administrating by the department through a, uh, through the circulars. In circular themselves, they are, uh, we, they are, the department has mentioned certain payments uh, which are exempted according to the provisions of the Inland Revenue Act. If the payment uh, has not mentioned in those circulars, uh, recipients uh, of so those payment or the withholdees have to come to the department and has and they have to obtain a uh, confirmation from the department confirming their withholding tax uh, exclusion, uh, confirming their income tax exemption. The department will issue a letter, and that letter you can submit to the withholding agent and ask not to deduct withholding tax. So those payments you need not to deduct withholding tax when you are making payments to withholdees. Now uh, we'll see uh, what are the payments subject to withholding tax or AIT under section 84 or section 84A and what are the applicable rates. First one is uh, not a new one, it's coming from the uh, commencement date of the Inland Revenue Act that is April 1st, 2018. It's for, it's only for non-resident. So payments to non-resident person with respect to land, sea, air transport or telecommunication service and there is a gazette issued uh, with effect from 1st April 2018. Uh, gazette number is uh, 2064451. The applicable tax rate is 2%. So there is no change uh, from the amendment in the revenue act. Second one is also not a new one, it's also available from the commencement date of the Act uh, that is on sale price payable to the seller of any gem sold at an auction conducted by the National Gem and Jewelry Authority. So if the uh, gem, National Gem and Jewelry Authority uh, deducted 2.5 withholding tax on the sale price payable uh, on relevant gems gems uh, there is no further tax liability because it's exempted anyway national gem and jewelry authority has to deduct this 2.5 uh, tax uh, from the commencement date of the in the revenue act the next item is a newly uh, changed item uh, introduced with effect from 1st january 2023 According to, that uh, according to that provision, if you are making interest or discount uh, to any person, you will have to deduct 5% withholding tax. This 5% withholding tax is not a final withholding payment for any person. Therefore, if, in, if any individual receives uh, interest income and uh, after the deduction of 5% withholding tax, that person has to include uh, relevant interest in computing their taxable income and after calculating their tax liability, if there is any excess, uh, they can have a refund from the Inland Revenue Department because this 5% withholding tax will be considered as a tax credit for relevant withholding. If there is any excess payment, that they, if, they are, if there is no excess, then there is a tax liability uh, after you calculate your gross tax liability that has to be made as uh, payments uh, to settle your total income tax liability. Then the next uh, withholding tax subject payment is rent. If you are making uh, rent payments to a resident person, applicable tax rate is 10%. On the other hand, if your monthly rent payment is not exceeding 100,000, you need not to deduct this withholding tax, but only for uh, rent payments to resident person. When you are identifying particular payment as rent, you have to be uh, considered uh, about the definition 
available in section 195 of the Inland Revenue Act. According to that definition, uh, you have to consider whether you are re making rent payment for the use or right to use of property of any kind. According to uh, this provision, uh, all movable property rents and immovable property rents are covered. Therefore, uh, it doesn't ma matter whether you are making uh, this payment for land or building, you have to consider about the other payments as well, including vehicle rent, machinery rent and other rents. But when considering particular payment as a rent, uh, you have to consider whether the payment is for hiring purpose or for transport purpose. If it is a uh, hiring payment, then you need not to deduct withholding tax. Similarly, if it is a transport service payment, you need not to deduct withholding tax. In this regard, you can refer there is a withholding tax related public ruling issued by the department and it's available in Inland Revenue website. So there you can find what are the facts you have to consider when you are deciding particular payment as rent or hire or transport charge. Generally, the department is verifying whether the using right of the property has been transferred from the supplier to the payer from withholding to withholding agent. If the using right of the property has been transferred from withholding to withholding agent, you are making a rent payment and subject to these provisions, you have to deduct withholding tax or advance income tax at 10%. Next item is rent payments to non-residents. Uh, if you are making rent payments to resident, previous explanation is applicable. But if you are making rent payments to non-resident, applicable tax rate is 14%. Other than that, charges, natural resource payment, royalty, premium or uh, payments make as winning from a lottery and betting or gambling uh, payments subject to tax at 14%. There are definitions for natural resource payments and royalties. Uh, which you can find from section 195 of the In Revenue Act. If your lottery winning payment is not exceeding rupees 500,000, it's an exempted amount and no need to deduct withholding tax. If the lottery winning price is over rupees 500,000, relevant withholding tax is applicable and you have to deduct 14% withholding tax on such payments. The final one is dividend declared by a resident company. You have to deduct for 15% withholding tax on dividend payments. Now I am moving to discuss about the section 85. There is a clear difference between section 85, 85 and 84, 84A because section 85 says when you are making uh, payment as a person to a resident individual. So this time uh, not a person makes payment to a person but person makes a service payment to a resident individual. So as a de government department, ministries and local authorities you are not a person therefore you need not to deduct withholding tax under section 85 as well. Additionally, another provision is there in section 85. It's not a new one. If you are making a service fee or insurance premium to a non-resident person, any person has to deduct withholding tax under section 85. We will see what are the payments available in section 85 which, which, was, which were introduced with effect from 1st January 2023. There we have three items. First one is teaching, lecturing, examination, invigilating or supervising and examination. 
Second one is commission or brokerage to a resident insurance sales or canvassing agent. Third one is services provided by an individual in the capacity of independent service provider such as doctor, engineer, accountant, lawyer, software developer, researcher or academic. So if you are making payments to resident individual for these three types of services, you have to deduct 5% withholding tax if the payment uh, is more than 100,000 for a month, for a calendar month. According to section 85, there is a require, there is a power granted by the act to prescribe certain services uh, which will be subject to withholding tax. It says any individual service provider as may be prescribed by the regulation. But at this moment there is no gasset has been issued therefore you need not to apply that section until a gasset is issued. So the previous gasset issued under the provision of uh, Inland Revenue Act prior to 31st December 2019 is not applicable in this regard. Therefore, construction services, janitorial, security services, catering, management services covered under the previous gasset is not applicable for this withholding tax requirement and you need not to deduct withholding tax on those service payments made to individual resident person. If there is any gasset is issued in future, in the revenue department will inform to the taxpayers through public notices. Until that you need not to deduct withholding tax on uh, payments other than these three items as I have explained. The next one is pays a service fee or an insurance premium to a non-resident person applicable withholding tax rate is 14 percent. As in section 84 and 84a, there is an exclusion section for section 85.2. Accordingly, if you are an individual not doing a business and making payment to another resident or non-resident person, you need not to deduct withholding tax. But if you are an individual who is doing a business, then you have to deduct withholding tax subject to this provision. The second one is also when you are making a service payment to a resident individual who is exempted from income tax, then you need not to deduct withholding tax. So as I have explained, same procedure explained under uh, the withholding tax circulars will be applicable. So there are three types of withholding tax circulars issued by the Inland Revenue Department. First one is applicable for the purpose of deducting advance income tax uh, on interest payments, interest or discount payments making by uh, banks or financial institution on deposit. That circular uh, published dated December 20th, 2022. Second one is for every withholding tax subjected payments. Third one is for outward remittance. If you are making payments to outside person, you have to go through with this third circular and you have to obtain a tax clearance certificate from the Inland Revenue Department and uh, if your payment is available in the negative list of the circular, you can, you can exclude the tax clearance re uh, requ uh, requirement. Second circular is on all payments making by the withholding agents. Therefore, uh, any payment which was not answered uh, in first and third circular, you have to comply with the second one that is on circular to withholding agents uh, on deduction of any payment. Uh, this circular is also uh, published dated December 23, 
2022. So in these three, all circulars, they are, uh, we have explained what are the withholding tax liable payment, what are the exempt payment, how you can deduct withholding tax, how you can pay withholding tax to the Inland Revenue Department and how you can uh, obtain um, registration for withholding tax to remit your money and uh, what are the documents you have to keep and how you can in, uh, issue withholding tax certificate to withholding every information are there so please comply for these three circulars in, in uh, regarding the withholding tax imposed under section 84 84a and section 85 additionally i will explain uh, what are the final withholding tax payments available after the Inland Revenue Amendment Act number 45 of 2022. So as you know, according to section 2, you have to pay income tax on taxable income and additionally, if you are receive or derives a final withholding payment, you have to make income tax payment. Final withholding payments are listed under section 88 of the Inland Revenue Act. According to the amended provision, after the amendments, there are four items available in section 88. First one, amount paid as winning from a lottery, reward, betting or gambling other than amounts received in conducting a business consisting of betting and gaming. If, so this payment subject to withholding tax at 14%, once uh, withholding agent has deducted relevant withholding on relevant payment and made the payment so in the hands of withholding it's a final withholding payment so you need not to uh, pay further tax on such payment and you are not entitled for tax credit on uh, relevant withholding tax deducted on source second one is payments made to non-resident person who is not the citizen of sri lanka or to the non-resident entities uh, that are subject to withholding other than uh, such payments derived through a Sri Lanka permanent establishment. Third one is interest paid to or treated as being derived by a non-resident but a citizen in Sri Lanka. So for them, they are entitled to get the benefit of personal relief for the tax-free allowance if they derive interest income less than uh, personal relief, they can uh, ask for a refund. If the payment is more than, if the interest or other income uh, available to them is more than personal relief, uh, subject to this final provision, they can make tax payment on other, other sources. Fourth one is the amended one introduced from uh, amendment act number 45 of 2022 there it says or no after january 1st 2023 dividends paid by a resident company is also a final withholding payment so once the resident company has deducted withholding tax on dividend in the hands of withholding withholding it's a final withholding payment and there is no requirement to include dividend as a part of taxable income. Thank you very much.